So if this is looking at the back side of this guy, which way, which side is this? What? The right. The right side. Okay. If we're looking at this guy from the side, which side is this? Right. Also right. Okay. <clears throat> So there's, on the piece of paper that you're going to submit, there's four views. I'm going to show you just how to do it on two, because this is also going to be what you use in FSA uh, when you get in TRAD5, how to work up a patient. This is something you can do every time on a patient, or this is something that you can do just on re-exams or every three visits. There's the tempo with which you do it is up to your goals, but it is worth doing consistently. Who's, uh, who's my patient? Okay. Can we look at your posture? Is that okay with you? Sure. Is that the first thing we should do? Tell him we're looking at his posture? No. 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 We want him to think about anything else. So what you can do is have him do jumping jacks, uh, march in a circle, march in place with his eyes closed. <laughs> if you have a hallway, you can have him walk down it and then walk back, counting backwards by sevens from a hundred. You don't want to. I, I don't care if he's right about his math. I care that he's thinking about anything else. So that'll be like 93. Uh, what else? Yeah, that's it. You're trying to get him to think about something else. You can have him name all the flowers that start with P and something like that to get when you start the thinking tombs. that's one plums sure. <laughs> I, I know it's a fruit but it's it just doesn't saying matter if he's right it doesn't matter if right. uh, stand it facing this it. way now close your eyes and march in place get those legs up there you go all right and stop you can open your eyes okay so you guys might want to center yourself in front of him if you can see this we're going to look first for the head tilt or rotation. So you can look at the bridge of his nose and also the bottoms of his ears and see if you see a difference. Excuse me. Do you see a tilt one way or the other? There's no right or wrong answer. No? No? I mean, yeah, but... <laughs> Which way is it going? To the right. Okay. So we're gonna add a slight tilt to the right. What about a rotation? Do you see one ear more than the other? It's rotating to the right. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a rotation this way too. What muscle does that? Yeah, so already, can we think of how we would treat this? Who's planning on taking insurance in their office? Who's on shirt? Who's gonna be cash? Both. 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 That leads me to my next question. So, which shoulder is higher than the other? How do you know the left one's not low? Ooh. Are you going to adjust a whole shoulder? If I send this into the insurance company, see this? This is what we see all the time in FSA. Am I going to ask you for my money back? Probably, yeah. Insurance company might do this. You might send them bills for years and they may pay you. Then they may come back three years later and say, uh, upon review of your records, we uh, would like more information based on the information you provided. And then uh, you will be like, well, that was three years ago. Uh, I don't have any more information than what I provided you. And they're like, okay, well, we need our money back. Oh. And we did that, and we'd like to do that for 30 of your patients who you send in the same records for. And you're not gonna go back and change your notes three years later, so you're gonna pay them. <clears throat> Unless you do stuff like this, which we're about to do. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're not gonna look at the entire shoulder, because this could be a hypertonic trap, which is bringing that shoulder up, right? We'd wanna know the difference between them. So. I'm going to look at your SC joint next, right in front of you, is that cool? Mm -hmm. We're going to put our thumbs right up underneath it, and I'm going to put my fingers in the air. That way we can not be influenced by the hypertonicity. I'm going to kneel down so you can see. What do you see? His right one's high. His right one's high. So we're going to write that down. 
We're going to label it. Next, we're going to do AC. What do you see? Left one down. Which one? Right one up. Right one's higher. His right one? Okay, is that possible to have an AC and a SC on the same side? Hi? Yeah. Yeah, it just happened. <laughs> okay, the next thing we're going to look at is internal rotation. <clears throat> How many knuckles can you see on his right hand? Thumb is included. Yeah. Luis, you probably got the best view. How many knuckles do you see? Yes. Three. Okay. We're going to do this at the shoulder because if you did it down on the elbow or wrist, that would just be pronation or supination. So we found three on the right. How many on the left? Four. Which, are you right hand or left? Left. So we're going to put a star next to his dominant hand. Makes sense. Do we want him to have more knuckles showing? No. Do we want to have less? So this is a good tool to use to see whether or not he's making progress. If he comes back in two weeks later and he's got two showing on the right and three on the left, is he making progress? Mm -hmm. Yes. It might be slow, but it is still progress. Okay, next we're going to, so based on this, do we have a high right shoulder so far? Yeah. Do we know what surfaces we want to adjust in order to help with that? Also, yes. Okay, look at the top of the ilium. What do you see? Right one higher. My right or his right? His right. His right. So because we're on the anterior side, we're going to do this and we're going to label it anterior. Does he have any varus or valgus of the knees? So what? I don't think we can see that. This is varus, this would be valgus. Not really. Oh, yeah. Anything? Bears? Okay, so we'll do that. If you didn't, we would just draw a dotted line across, which means that we measured it. It just didn't show up as anything. Uh, are his toes facing forward on both feet? His right yeah. foot's out a little bit. Right foot is turned out a little bit? Okay, so we'll draw a small arrow this way. If you were to guess, is he standing on the inside or the outside <clears throat> of his right foot? Outside. What about left foot? Inside. Let's test it out. Definitely outside of his right. Mm, hard to tell. Probably more outside of his left too. So we're going to do it like this. Okay. We've got a couple more things to do. We're going to do that on the posterior side. Normally we would move around our patient. So would you mind facing that way? Oh All right. Make sure everything's kind of the same. All right, you want to watch your place again? No, I'm sure. There you go. <laughs> go ahead and stop. That's how he walks. <laughs> Next, we're going to look at inferior angle of the scapula. What do you see? So, left one is high. Is that possible? Is it the left one yeah. over? Of course. It just happened, right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, last thing, we're going to look at iliac crest. Right one's high. Right one's high. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we have here? Compared. Let's talk about this. You can, as you, you can relax. Let's put some of this stuff together. So he's got a toe player over here. He's definitely standing on the outside of his right foot. Can you see how that would influence some of the stuff that makes this happen. Yeah? What's happening right here? Ribs and pelvis are approximated. Do we know a muscle that does that? Does that come up? Walk. You will. Yeah. Can we now put a myofascial release code and bill that to insurance with confidence and clarity? Yeah. Yes. Is that influencing his right shoulder in any way? Yeah. Yeah, there's probably some compensation there for this happening. Are we going to adjust some surfaces in the shoulder now to help that bring him back from internal rotation? Yes. Can we do that with confidence and clarity? Yes. Yes. 
Intro doors. This is probably creating some of this stuff. We know his left arm is dominant, which is probably elevating the scapula a little bit, which is giving us a lot of ways in which we probably layer treatment to it. And all we did was look at how he was standing. The next part would be to look at the lateral side and we would drop a line down from EAM to AC, greater trochanter, fibular head, and lateral malleolus. And you want to create a plumb line, in which case you'd want to look at whether or not we have forward head posture or a tilt, Sympathetic. or we have rounded forward shoulders again. Sympathetic. If you see an arm in front, you can label that. Uh, you might see hyperkyphosis of the thoracic spine or hyperlordosis of the lumbar spine. You might see pelvic tilts, either posterior or anterior. Uh, you might see one leg in front of the other, in which case we'd want to label that too. And uh, all sorts of things. You've got, this is only one way to do it. Uh, you can include as much information as you see it. And as long as you're documenting in a way that makes sense to you, that's going to be how you determine whether or not your patients are making progress or not. Uh, this is how I want you to do it for the assignment though. Uh, you're going to kind of take your history, dictate what you're doing during the video. And by the way, all the videos should be uploaded to YouTube as unlisted. Uh, what I mean by that, there's three ways. You can put it as public, private, or unlisted. If it's unlisted, that means nobody can search for it, but anybody with the link can see it, which is important because I want to be able to see it. If it's private, only you can see it. And that's going to be hard for me to evaluate. If it's public, that means people can search for it. So keep your patients protected and make it unlisted. Mm -hmm. Probably best if you didn't use somebody in chiropractic school because this could be an entry point into actually performing an evaluation for somebody. I'm also, this, is a, this video is for you because when we get into FSA, everybody know what FSA is? Full spine adjusting, which starts Tri-5. We see a lot of this. In which case, I'm gonna be like, go watch your video again. Because if you're justifying your adjustment based on a high right shoulder and a whatever this is, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that you know more about this or you should know more about that. Because this is really how we can pull this patient off the paper and provide a treatment plan. The other part is gonna to be to fill out the, the piece of paper. And uh, there's gonna be a couple things on there. Uh, you're gonna, uh, there's four views. You can use all four if you want to, or just two like I did. Uh, you can, there's gonna be a place for you to summarize your findings with them standing. The supine and prone, don't worry about that. It's just other space for you to use if you need it. There's gonna be a place where you can summarize the history. Some important findings like traumas or surgeries or stuff like that. But don't limit it just to that. If they've got something that's pertinent in their history, include it in, that, in the go box. And underneath that is going to be other. When it says other comments, that's where I want you to come up with a treatment plan. How you would approach this person. If there's something else you would need as far as testing goes to start care with them. And there's no right answer. I'm grading on completeness, whether or not you do all that. So even if you're completely wrong, I don't care. I just want you to start thinking about how you would approach a case right now with the information that you have. Any questions about that? Video should be uploaded as a YouTube link.